Trading, the Market Academy, the home of sports trading. Hi, I'm Mark, and this video is from the Trading Market Academy, the home of sports trading. In this video, we're going to be covering the gambler's fallacy. It may be a concept most of us have encountered before, but what exactly is the gambler's fallacy? Gambler or not, you will be enlightened by the time you reach the end of this video, and we're not a single mathematical formula in sight. So what is the gambler's fallacy? It's a trick. To put it simply and bluntly, the word fallacy originally derives from the Latin word fallacia, means a trick or fraud. Gambler's fallacy is perceived as a cognitive trick your brain plays in order to deal with a puzzling situation, specifically when faced with a sequence of random events and it's unable to find a relatable pattern within. The gambler's fallacy is an unwilling trick stemming from the lack of a better solution designed by your brain to interpret overwhelming information. Scholars call it a cognitive bias, a deviation from rationality and judgment. Such a description, however, does not even begin to describe its diversity, which starts with the multitude of different names used to explain the phenomenon. If by any chance gambler's fallacy does not ring up any bells, how about the maturity of chances, or better yet, the Monte Carlo fallacy? The maturity of chances. The law of the maturity of chances is a technical name given to the idea that more bets you make on a losing run, the more you're due to win in the end. Whatever the probability of an event might be, the principle behind the maturity of chances is simple. The likelihood of a win increases as the losing run goes on. The reasoning behind such an assumption is based on the mathematical principle best explained through a coin toss and the law of large numbers. With outcomes of the tosses being statistically independent, the probability of getting heads or tails on a single toss is 2 or 50%. According to the law of large numbers, the average result of a large number of coin tosses becomes closer to the average as more and more tosses are made. The law of large numbers only applies to large numbers of attempts, as the name itself suggests, and should not be used to find a reason or explanation behind the individual attempts, tosses, or roulette spins for that matter. So what's the Monte Carlo fallacy? Well, on the 18th of August 1918, the most famous occurrence of gambler's fallacy took place in a game of roulette at the famed Monte Carlo Casino. With the remarkable probability of around 1 in 66.6 .6 million, the roulette ball ended up falling on black for a record 26 times in a row which was an unprecedented and largely inexplicable event in the world of gambling to date. The effect of this particular example was so overwhelming that it later became the main association to the actual phenomenon of gambler's fallacy. Somewhere around the 15th time the ball landed on black, the players began to panic. Bets were being made on red as gamblers ended up losing millions of francs, claiming and firmly believing that the streak was due to end, while they are in the minds falsely led by the law of large numbers and the maturity of odds. The hot hand fallacy. The concept on the opposite side of the spectrum of the Monte Carlo is known as a hot hand fallacy. Imagine a single player in 1918 who would have decided to bet only on black after the ball landed on it 15 times in a row. The improbable scenario would then lead him to think, I'm going to win all 15 times in the initial sequence, and he would have done. Would they be bold enough to continue to bet on black after the ball hit the colour after a 15 strong run? Probably. Contrary to the particular gambler's perplexed fellow players, this one would have enjoyed what is called the hot hand phenomenon. It presumes that the future attempts could produce results based on a previously positive streak. This phenomenon could falsely lead players to believe their previous attempts have been related to their good fortune or lady luck smiling on them on that occasion, which makes the hot hand occurrence merely a psychological attitude. The hot hand phenomenon originated from basketball in 1985, that players' chances of making successful shots are affected by the outcome of the player's previous shot. The shot they claimed is likely to be successful if the previous shot went in. Statistical independence. Statistical independence argues that the individual members of any sequence and statistical independence of each other will not be in any way connected. It simply states that you will be unable to predict the next outcome of the sequence based on the knowledge and the experience provided by the previous members of the sequence. Predict the following number sequence. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That one's easy. Try 3, 15, 57, 21. 1, 43. A person with basic knowledge of maths would have no problem predicting the next number in the first sequence, which illustrates even numbers. However, no knowledge of maths would help you predict the next number of the second sequence. Why? Because it's completely random and imagined as a sequence of a page of numbers you get while flicking through a book with your eyes closed. Numbers from the second sequence are statistically independent and therefore cannot be predicted, which is why the gambler's fallacy failed to acknowledge in the 1918 Monte Carlo Casino. Dissecting the Monte Carlo fallacy. Gamblers, punters and players in general largely rely on statistics and maths to win. 
Why they usually fail is to remember it is the fact that the casino games nowadays are powered by sophisticated random number generators, making a game of online roulette for example almost impossible to predict. Assuming the Monte Carlo roulette wheel was fair, the probability of the ball landing on black was roughly 49% and the law of large numbers implies so, a little less than it evens and 1 over 2 with any turn of the wheel. That in other words would be expected value for every bet in which the outcome was equally likely. The colours coming up on the wheel are statistically independent of one another and will not result in any pattern or outcome your mind may believe. This independence is what the human brain fails to process in terms of probability, which remains the same regardless of how many times the ball would fall on black. The roulette wheel along with the other two colours and the ball are all statistically independent elements without a memory or of any sort, hence preventing the players from producing any kind of predictable sequence. Unlike machine powered games such as roulette, sports such as football do not strictly follow the same pattern of statistical independence. Sports betters use statistics to analyse the current form of team, head to head records, home and away records and attempt to recognise a pattern that will help them pick out a winning team. Unlike black and red, as the example in roulette, the situation with football is different as the outcome cannot be observed in an independent term. Unlike a coin, a dice, ball or black and red, which do not have any memory of their own, football participants, people cannot be observed as completely independent elements. The probability of a coin toss will always be 50-50, but how do we determine the expected probability in a football game? The players have memory, feelings and emotions and are susceptible to variations in behaviour, which can affect the outcome of the game regardless of the statistics. The numbers would indicate that a given football match is an independent event in a series of a season, but such an assumption is far from the truth. Let's imagine a situation. It's the 35th game round of the Premier League and Liverpool have already secured the title with a 5 point advantage over Manchester City. They have an impressive home record and are yet to lose a game at Anfield in the campaign. Without winning their last 7 matches, relegation threatened Newcastle's travel to Liverpool and need to win in order to secure the Premier League status next season. The statistical analysis of the game is as follows. We have an undefeated league leaders playing host to a team suffering from a dreadful run and sitting at the bottom part of the table. If this is everything you know about the game, without any background info, what would be the best and most obvious bet to make here? Surely a home win? Well, no. The exact probability of the occurrence of this particular sporting event will be determined by a number of factors. Liverpool, already champions, will be in a celebrative mood and will have no need to go full strength into the game. The carefree approach. However, involuntary as they are professionals could affect the result against the under pressure side which have everything to lose. Motivation and determination coming from the side of Newcastle could play an important part in the final outcome of a match. This particular analysis and inspection of the elements leading to a conclusion that is in contrast to the stats. It's called the wisdom of crowds. It's a theory claiming that the general public is capable of shaping up odds which could correct by a human factor. To draw a line beneath it all, sports events are human and process and memory, which make gambler's fallacy different applied phenomenon. Knowing that streak of results can affect and be affected by the same psychology that is behind them. Teach yourself how to avoid psychology bias. How do we teach our brains to avoid falling into a trap of cognitive bias? We could start by recognising the various types of bias, as there is 12 cognitive bias science that have been identified and studied thus far, and yes, gambler's fallacy is one of them. So we'll cover them here. The observation selection bias. Let's say you decide to treat yourself to a new jacket. You have identified the brand when you are getting ready to go out there to the store. You notice plenty of wearing the same brand and style you wanted to buy. As you dwell on this further, your brain will also begin to pick up more of the same colour and style as you initially desired. The phenomenon is not explained by frequency of occurrence, but by our filtered selection. In-group bias. Found in closely tied groups such as religions, gangs or clubs, this is a particular bias you will have your place compete with faith inside the group without justified reason. Easily transferred across the group members, beliefs and convictions will become your own even if they are not that close to being true. Post-purchase bias. Also called the bias Stockholm Syndrome, this particular bias will see you defend a badly made decision usually when trying to persuade others that something you just bought is not so bad after all. What your brain is trying to do there is to rationalise and convince that you that you made the right choice, even though deep down you know you made the wrong decision. Negativity bias. It's in our nature as humans get stuck on the bad and less on the good around us. Good news gets discarded more easily and negative notions have a greater effect on our state of mind. Confirmation bias. The most confronting type of them all, this particular bias will lead you to interpret things to the way it fits your own beliefs. Confirmation bias comes after a validation of your own attitudes, strengthens them and the perception about them as being true beyond doubt. 
Climate change deniers are often cited as having confirmation bias, focusing down on a limited range of evidence that supports no climate change, while ignoring a multitude of evidence showing its existence. Self-serving bias. Close related to the previous form, this type of bias is guided by humans' need to maintain their self-esteem. This bias leads us to boost our own image in the overlay favourable manner without actually objectifying reasoning. Status quo bias. The biggest challenge in life, as mentioned before, is to get out of your comfort zone, exactly what is the type of bias is all about. If there is a way to keep maintaining the status quo and continue to do things the way we find fit, it often does not even matter much if it's just a slight change would bring a measurable improvement. The anchoring effect. Anchoring is a term used for people who like to hang on to things that are very familiar with and have a tendency to get stuck too heavily on the trait or piece of information without analysing the other possibilities. The effect is closely related to the prices and is issued to influence a customer's decision. To our mind, there is no great difference between a £100 price tag and a £99.99 pence one. Nine is the biggest anchor here. Current movement bias. This occurs when we let short-term decisions take control of our long-term thinking and decision-making. It's all about getting instant gratification compared to the future benefits. This is why people have so much trouble quitting smoking or starting eating healthy. Projection bias. Relies on people's falsely conceived assumption that other people will automatically, or to a greater extent, agree with their own beliefs and that such opinions will remain unchanged in time. What one person finds important will not be by default as important to other people. Bandwagon bias. Close related to projection bias, this type can be described through peer thinking. It's based on the human need to belong to a group of like-minded people. It is another way to remain within the boundaries of your own comfort zone, sharing with others who just make you feel better about yourself and your own beliefs, even if they are false or harmful. Gambler's fallacy. Based on the start of this video, gambler's fallacy can be summed up as a human's brain's tendency to behave towards finding patterns where none do exist. From a gambler's sport better or any other type of player at this point of view, all 12 types of bias can be incorporated into real life gaming experiences. Harnessing randomness. A great strategy to accept that gambler's fallacy can influence your judgement when gambling, even for sports betting, is to learn how to harness the power of randomness. It can be done in a number of ways. The most common way is to rely on your gut and make educated guesses using a rule of thumb, making guesstimation or simply using common sense. This in a word is called heuristic, a process that allows you to learn yourself. People throughout history have relied on heuristic methods, most often without even realising they are doing so. It is a method of solving a problem by taking a step back to observe the situation from a neutral standpoint. Arguably the most effective approach to not only deal with a gambler's fallacy, but with all 12 types of cognitive bias. A least scientific approach to gaining immunity to gambler's fallacy is to learn from your mistakes, becoming more mature. There is a belief that gambler's fallacy is one of the easiest cognitive biases to overcome. Tel Aviv University has performed research where basic misconceptions were observed through the prism of evolution, age and time. The results are satisfactory for a regular gambler's bloke at least. A gambler's fallacy is apparently possible to outgrow. Well done for completing this video and now time to move on to the next. Thank you for watching and together we're all trading the market.